the Wolfman. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I'm here today with a childhood idol of mine, uh, Julia Butterfly Hill. And you spent like a lot of time in a tree in your bare feet to preserve it and protect it. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, I was 23 years old and I found out that over 97% of the ancient redwoods are already gone and that we're still logging them. And the way that we're logging them is highly destructive, causing mudslides, it destroys habitat for endangered species, as well as destroying people's homes, that we follow up the clear cutting with lighting them on fire with diesel fuel or with napalm, turning it a beautiful ancient forest into a toxic wasteland. And when I heard that information, I just felt deep, deep in my heart that I had to do something, and I didn't know what I was going to do. I'd never done activism before, but I knew I wanted to do something, and then I heard that there was this action called tree sitting, where you could sit in a tree and try and bring attention to what was happening, and also try and protect the tree that you're in. And I grew up with two brothers and no sister. I was very poor traveling around the country, so I spent a lot of time in nature and playing in trees. So when I heard I could live in a tree to help, I was like, I know how to do that. Sign me up. And that's how I got involved. Wow. So you're here in Toronto, Ontario, and you're here to do a talk this evening just about that. So what can we expect to hear in your talk? Well, I never write speeches. I really speak from my heart and whatever comes alive in the moment. I definitely am passionate about reminding us that we are of this earth and we are from this earth. And we need to begin exploring what that looks like, what that feels like, how to restore and heal that torn connection of this relationship. And then how we then take that relationship into our lives, whether it's a workplace or our families or our communities, how do we take that healing and restoration with this earth and then bring that into our world and into our communities that hopefully that we can turn the tide of one that's been very harmful and very destructive to one that's more loving and caring and compassionate. Wow, that's a really, that's a beautiful, beautiful message. So now, you know, when you look around on the internet, I see people do things like they name children after your, the tree that you were in. How does that make Make you feel that you went from a simple act of activism and now d dedicating your life to it to see that legacy? Well, some of it's a little weird um, just because I'm an introvert and people don't know that because they know me as a public person, but I'm like, I lived in a tree by myself for two years. <laughs> An extrovert might have lasted two months, maybe. I, part of the reason I was able to last two years is because my nature is an introvert. So part of it is a little strange for me having all that attention because the introverts in me is like, nope, not me. But what I love about it is that I think that our, our human family is hungry for stories that really share our authentic selves instead of the surface. What do you wear? What kind of car do you drive? Where do you live? But so much of our society and industrialized society is based on what's on the surface and our souls long for depth our souls long for roots and I think that what's really igniting in people is seeing a mirror of themselves of what they care about what's important to them and in that space I'm deeply honored that I've gotten to be a part of that Wow so if people want to learn more about you where can they go do you have a website www.juliabutterfly.com Awesome. All right. I'm going to put that right there. You can go on the website. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Wolfman with Julia Butterfly Hill. Thank you. Thank you.